every year that goes by, we're one more step along this upward warming trajectory that our climate is on. We're warming by about a quarter of a degree per decade. And the last three years for the UK in records that go back to 1884 have been among the five warmest on record for the UK. As our climate warms, um, it is the extremes that are affected the most. Um, so we are seeing um, extremes of temperature, um, record-breaking temperatures on quite a frequent basis now. Um, and uh, this is actually becoming uh, a normal as our climate is continuing to change. It's not becoming a new, it's not unusual. It's, it's a fairly normal thing that we're seeing extremes and records on a regular basis. And um, in particular, we're seeing the uh, frequency uh, and intensity of spells of hot weather in UK really quite dramatically uh, increasing. Uh, and of course, it's these extremes that have the greatest impact. If we think about impact on our infrastructure, um, on public health for people who are perhaps vulnerable to hot weather, impacts on the environment and so on. And, 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 and Mike, how can you be so sure that this research indicates a, a longer term change in trajectory as opposed to short term uh, fluctuations? Well, you're right that there is a lot of variability uh, in, our weather, in our weather on a day to day uh, and indeed month to month basis. But when we look at long term patterns over long term periods of time to take out that variability and look at long term trends in observations that go right the way back, um, we can clearly see this warming trend. So in the report, we show some uh, we show some data from um, a climate series have called Central England Temperature it goes back uh, more than 300 years. And we can see that the recent warmth that we're seeing in the UK has far exceeded anything in, in those observations um, back more than three, three centuries. Um, and actually, the last three years that we've had, which I say were amongst the five warmest on record for the UK, we anticipate that those will be fairly average by the middle of this century and indeed cool by the end of the century. So what we've actually seen in the past um, is no longer necessarily a reliable indication of what we, what we may have seen in, in the future. So we are going to be heading outside the envelope of uh, what we've experienced through time. So how do we know this? We know this from these, these um, observations from this weather station network um, ac across the UK. And Mike, can you spell out to us just how serious this is? I mean, what are the consequences of more extreme weather in the UK? Well, let me give you a couple of um, examples of that. If we look at the number of days that are five degrees above average in the most recent decade to compare to the period from 1961 to 1990, the number of those days has doubled. If we look at um, eight degrees above average, it has trebled and 10 degrees above average, it has quadrupled. And we can see in the observations that the hottest summer days um, are warming in some parts of the UK twice as fast as average summer days. And of course, it's these extremes that have the greatest impact. You know, we're just coming out of a pretty hot spell of weather for the UK that we've just had with temperatures in, uh, into perhaps 33, 34 degrees. Now, that's not necessarily in itself exceptional for the UK. But what is uh, really increasingly unusual is the frequency that we are seeing this type of event. Um, and this really does have impacts on things like um, heat wave mortality and so on. We're also seeing some quite substantial changes in rainfall too. As our climate gets warmer, it will also get wetter because the atmosphere has a greater capacity to hold more moisture. And in fact, um, most of that increases in the winter half year um, between October and March. We've seen a 16% increase in rainfall in the most recent decade compared to this period from 1961 to 1990. But actually in terms of the number of times where we see twice the monthly average rainfall, that's actually increased by about 50% um, when we look at this most recent decade. Um, and of course, when we see these rainfall extremes, these, call, these have the potential to cause really significant flooding. If we think back to events that we had um, from the autumn 2023 um, to the spring of 2024, um, named storms, people may remember Storm Babette, for example, um, in eastern Scotland, there was quite widespread flooding at the start of 2024 across um, quite a lot of the UK. These can really affect um, people's lives. So, of course, it's a concern if this is on the increase. Of course, things like 
drought, flooding, heat strokes are all direct sort of impacts of extreme weather, but there are indirect consequences too. Can you spell out some of those for us? Um, well, there are lots of um, there are lots of things changing that this report um, this report flags. Um, I mean, for example, if we look at the number of days of frosts that we experience in the UK, actually those are reducing quite a lot. So um, the number of frosts has gone down by around about a quarter uh, since the 1980s. That's effectively um, uh, two weeks uh, less uh, of air frost, and in fact, around about a month less ground frost in the UK. Obviously, these things have implications for things like how we heat our homes, we may actually find we need to heat our homes less in the future. The flip side is we may obviously need to consider a lot more about how we cool our homes in the summer um, when the weather is very hot. And we also need to think about how these changes are going to affect uh, the environment as well, um, the crops that we grow, uh, and so on. Um, so th there's multiple pieces to this, but what I would say is this. Um, where we go next does depend upon um, how much we emit going into the future. Um, and uh, every fraction of a degree of global warming that can be avoided will reduce the impacts that we see globally and also here in the UK. But even though that's an important aspect of climate change, we need to also uh, recognise that we will see changes in the system. We will need to adapt already. Another example of that is the fact that we have rising sea levels around the UK, there's a section in the report uh, from co-authors at the National Oceanography Centre, and we are seeing sea levels accelerate around the UK, sea level rise accelerating with implications for coastal flood risk. Uh, Mike, your report makes it clear that uh, things are he heading in a certain uh, direction. I mean, is there anything we can do? And if so, practically, what can we do uh, to try and help turn the tide? Well, I think the first of all, the thing I would say is that this is a report for UK government. Um, it will help um, shape government policies about uh, what happens to manage this problem in the future. Um, this report is obviously produced in the Met Office, and it's critically important that we provide the latest available scientific evidence of how our climate is changing. That is also that is um, obviously what this report is presenting, and that we also provide um, projections of how we expect it to play out through the coming century using high resolution modeling to see what we expect in the future. So it is important to um, provide that evidence so that any d decisions that are made are, are based on available evidence. But let's, let's be clear here. This is something that is not gonna go away. It is gonna affect us. It's gonna affect our children and it's gonna affect uh, generations to come. And the science on this couldn't really be clearer.